Hi everyone, welcome back. It's good to have you here. Thanks for clicking on this video. So today's video is going to be very simple. We're gonna bring it back to the basics and I'm gonna film a workout for you guys and I'm gonna do a voiceover. So I'm training legs today and I train legs twice a week. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I've been trying to keep things very minimal with my training, kind of do the fundamental exercises, the tried and true reliable strength slash muscle building exercises so i've kind of got rid of anything that's a bit frilly or that takes a bit of extra time and i've also stopped switching up my workouts a lot i've never really done that um, i do have phases where i like to try new things just to see if i can find something that might for example like target my glutes better target my hamstrings better but after training for a few years now and being somewhat educated on exercise physiology biomechanics that sort of thing i have now found what exercises work for me and to keep things running smoothly and efficiently and to stop kind of like getting bogged down on the details with training i just stick to the same exercises and i used to like feel guilty because i thought that that was so boring for you guys to watch and i don't know maybe it is but the reality is this is what i do it works for me i've consistently made progress over the years and even while like having other a lot of other things going on so yeah, I'm gonna share that with you today. And then after my workout, I'm going to show you guys a meal that I've been having all the time now. It's my favorite like kind of go-to lunch meal. And I'll talk you through that and then I'll give you like some alternatives as well. So I think that's all I have for you now. Actually, I'm gonna show you guys my outfit because it's Vital Seamless and you guys know how much I love Vital Seamless. I literally rave about it. Like it's actually super appropriate for this video because it's very tried and true, super reliable and works for any type of exercise in my opinion. If you're gonna invest in gym clothes, this is the best set to invest in. Interrupting here to let you guys know that this is the point when I put my finger directly over the mic So the next bit of audio it's gonna sound like I'm underwater. Sorry about that I'll put some captions on the screen so you guys can kind of make out what I'm saying but apologies for the bad audio I'm working on a solution to that because the mic is just at a really annoying spot on the camera <laughs> So I'm wearing a new color that's releasing, actually it will be live by the time this video goes live, so go check it out on the website if you like it. I just went through a very long pink phase, so blue is a nice change. This is a gorgeous, like, ski typical blue, super bright, super beautiful, perfect for spring. The main thing is that it's vital seamless and it's just the best set ever. super flattering on the bum. I love that it's all one color. Okay, the audio is back to normal now. I'd say that the sports bra is pretty low support. Just honestly, like, I wouldn't even call it medium. It's definitely low support, but it is so, so comfortable. It's kind of like the comfy bra when you don't feel like being strangled by your bra, if you know what I mean. And I wear a size extra small in the leggings and a size small in the bra for Vi all of Vital Seamless. I'm thinking about doing a review of the Vital Seamless and kind of new releases for Gymshark in my next video. So let me know if you'd like to see that. And if you do want to see it, then let me know if you have any specific questions because I'll try to answer them there. Okay, I'll see you guys at the gym for my basic but effective leg workout. Today we're targeting glutes and hamstrings. Welcome to the official voiceover section of this video. So getting into the workout, when I'm training legs, I am always going to do a thorough warm up. So I start by doing the stairs. I like to get my muscles, like the blood flowing in my muscles. I like to get them warm. Um, this is gonna help me get deeper stretches when I go into my prehab mobility routine. Um, and it just also can help me kind of like pre-activate like the muscles that I wanna target. So usually for me that's glutes and the Stairmaster does a great job of doing that. So I really do focus on stepping through my heels and getting a little bit of a glute pump going on. Okay, so now we're into the stretching, like prehabilitation mobility routine that I like to do 
always, always, always before I train legs. If I don't do this, then I have a terrible workout and I always regret it. So if you don't have some sort of like stretching or mobility routine before your training sessions, then I highly recommend implementing some stretching and some foam rolling. Here's what I like to do. So as you guys saw, I started, I like to start off with an ab stretch and just kind of stretch out my upper body as well. So I go into like that ab stretch and I think like child's pose, I'm not into yoga, so I don't know the names of the stretches. Um, but that kind of stretches out through my midsection and my arms and my upper body. And then the next stretch that I like to do is a hamstring stretch just to get that out of the way. So I do the variation where I'm, you're sitting with your legs forward. And then the next stretch that I like to do is the muscle that is the tightest. Start off with the glute stretch and then I'll go back to another glute stretch at the end just to make sure that that muscle is like as mobile as possible. Um, so yeah, I'm doing the typical glute stretch with um, crossing one leg over the front and then switching and doing the other side and then what you're seeing here is a hip flexor stretch with your leg fully extended backwards and then if you grab your foot as I'm doing here then this brings you into a really really good quad stretch so I have a feeling I might get a lot of questions about whether or not it's good practice to stretch before your training sessions I've always found it to be extremely beneficial for me personally and I think there's been recent research that's come out on stretching before weight training and how it actually does help improve your mobility on some exercises or some lifts. I'm not really up to date on that, I'll be honest. I actually found the information through one of Natasha Ocean's videos. It's a really, really good video on um, like prehabilitation and stretching before your workout. So I will leave that linked down below for you. So what you just missed was when I was like face down like a, a little crab, um, I was doing a hip flexor stretch and then right after that I went into uh, walk throughs a dynamic stretch so that will also help improve your mobility through your hip flexors your hip abductors your hamstrings and it will just sort of open up your hips so that you are able to hit like say for example a wider squat or a sumo deadlift something like that by the way I apologize for this angle I didn't really think it through when I was setting up my camera so yeah I'll try to get a better angle next time <laughs> then finishing off here we're doing some more glute stretches to try to get that little bit more of mobility and as well some foam rolling right on the glute and trying to hit into the piriformis which is a little tiny muscle within the hip and that is the muscle for me that just tightens up so much and it causes a lot of problems in my hips uh, so yeah I'm just trying to fix that as much as possible before I train glutes Now we're moving into my glute activations. So I like to keep this very, very quick and easy and simple. Here I'm just doing some simple body weight box squats and I'm really kind of leaning forward, sitting my hips back and really squeezing my glutes mindfully and pushing through my heels, just making sure my glutes are contracted the whole way through. And then next I'm doing some just body weight hip thrusts. I like to put my hands on my lap sort of where the bar would go to sort of mimic like how it will feel with the bar either way it just gets my glutes firing before we add on the weight now on to my very first weighted set of hip thrusts so i like to start off with pretty light weight and i prefer to do many warm-up sets i find this works best for me it keeps my glutes engaged if i take too much of a jump up then i really struggle maintaining my form and actually feeling it in my glutes so yeah i mean it takes a little bit of extra time and effort but uh, it's definitely worth it for me especially if i'm trying to go up heavier so if you do struggle with hip thrusts and maybe give this a try um, just kind of allow yourself for a little bit more time or maybe what you could do is do less working sets so instead of doing like three or four working sets just do like two i've also been experimenting with my stance so like my foot placement a little bit more recently so what i've been finding that's been working for me is to have my feet actually a, a little bit closer together 
rather than sort of like a wider stance that I was trying before. However, you do see that my feet are quite far forward and I'm not really hitting the 90 degree angle at my knees with my shins perpendicular to the floor. I think that set that you just saw was particularly bad and I fixed it a little bit in my next sets because when your feet are too far forward like that you might find that you feel it more in your hamstrings um, and if your feet are too far the other way so you have like a really small knee angle you'll feel it more in your quad so it's best to sort of hit a balance with that but anatomy varies slightly per individual so it might be really worth it for you especially if you are struggling with a hip thrust to try different foot positions so with your feet farther away from the bench or closer into the bench um, how wide apart your feet are and how much your toes are turned out. I would try slight variations on what you're doing to see if uh, one of those works a little bit better for you and just make note of it. So if you were successful in one workout, you can repeat it for the next workout. The next exercise of this workout is a Romanian deadlift. So this is just your standard barbell Romanian. Um, by the way guys, if you want the full workout, it will be in the description below. I don't think I'm going to do titles for the sets and the reps, so just check that out um, and that way you can screenshot it if you want to copy the workout. So yeah, Romanian deadlifts. I always include a variation of these on my leg day. They are just an excellent hamstring and glute building exercise. I love them. They are a staple and once you get the form down, they're not a difficult exercise to do. The key is to sit your hips backwards. So rather than thinking of bending forwards, just imagine someone tying a string around your hips and pulling them backwards and you will have a slight bend in your knee. Um, you're not squatting back. It's not like a regular deadlift, but also your knees aren't locked out. So try those tips and it should really help you if you do struggle with Romanians. But once you get that down, then you will just fall in love with the exercise. Moving on to lunges. So lunges are one of my favorite exercises ever for leg day and for glutes. I think they're super, super underrated for glutes. They are kind of a foolproof glute exercise because biomechanically they put your body in a position where your glutes have no choice but to activate even if you can't feel them. So I find like if I'm struggling to feel my glutes on that day and I do lunges, then they kind of like save me. I do experience some soreness to my glutes the next day and while soreness isn't an indicator of muscle growth or hypertrophy, they can at least indicate that you have targeted the area that you were looking to target. Just wanted to put that disclaimer in there, but if you are not doing lunges, specifically walking lunges, then you need to add them into your routine. I know it's really easy to be a baby and not wanna do them because they are quite like cardio intensive as well, but honestly, they're so good. You have to try them. And it's also good to note that if you take a slightly longer step, then it's gonna target your glutes a little bit more. Whereas if you take a very short step or a short stride, um, that's gonna hit your quads a bit more. Although you will hit both your quads and your glutes no matter what way you do the lunge. So overall, it's a great leg exercise. For the fourth exercise, I really wanted to hit hamstrings again and I decided to do a gliding leg curl. You can do these many different ways. You can do these on the T-Rex, you can do them with a Swiss ball, but I find they are the most effective with the row machine because you don't have to worry about the balance and stability kind of laterally. It's all about the movement, which is extremely difficult. If you have never tried this before, then um, yeah, just prepare. <laughs> but the great thing about this exercise is that it hits the hamstrings both proximally, so near the hip, um, and then distally, so at the knee. Um, hamstrings work as both hip extensors and knee flexors. They both bend the knee and straighten out the hips. If you wanna thoroughly hit your hamstrings and you know, you're, you really wanna grow your hamstrings, then you should be doing both knee curl type exercises and then also hip extensor type exercises such as a Romanian deadlift. But this exercise is great again, cause it does both at once. The key is to keep your hips really, really straight. So you don't wanna, like a lot of people let their bums drop and they just kind of keep their bum near the ground and glide 
and that's difficult as well but you gotta really keep the hips up high in order to get the most out of this exercise so give it a try um, and let me know what you think the final exercise of this workout is going to be a calf raise so we can't forget the calves I admit that I'm guilty of neglecting calves and it's really not a good look. I really am not a huge fan of the skinny calf look and I genetically have very skinny calves. Uh, so, and also my calves are very difficult to activate. Like my glutes and my calves were so stubborn, but I discovered as you guys have, you know, learn from if you watch my channel and watch my previous videos i spent a lot of time and effort trying to figure out how to activate the glutes i ha also did with calves but i didn't really share that information um, on my channel but when you're trying to build your calves the muscle that you're trying to target is the gastrocnemius and that is the thicker muscle that's near your knee at the back um, what you don't want to target is your soleus which is runs all the way down to your ankle underneath your gastroc and if you grow that then you can get cankles so that muscle you definitely want to avoid building and it's really easy to avoid growing that muscle by just not doing any sort of calf raises where your knees are bent um, you want to try to do all the calf raise variations where you have a pretty like straight knee although you don't want to lock out your knees just basically what i'm doing here but it, the key to targeting your gastroc um if you are not blessed with beautiful dancer calves like me is to do calf raises with body weight um a lot of people make the mistake of putting on ridiculously heavy weight um but you can just grow your calves with body weight and actually that's the best way to grow them because if you think of dancers and even like moms who have bigger calves um, it's just about walking on your calves a dancer is often on their toes so they're putting their body weight through their calves in that way and then a mom is carrying a very light baby so it's adding on a little bit of extra weight and she's probably doing a lot more walking around with that little bit of weight um, but the point is that the calves are a slow twitch muscle so they need little and often rather than like super heavy for a set of 10 so I like to do sets of 30 with body weight and I found the best way is to push through the balls of my feet so not through my toes um, you're, and you're really trying to rotate around the ankle joint um, and I like to use kind of a little pendulum motion by uh, rotating around the ball of my foot as well and it's kind of just gives a bit more of a pedal type of movement like if you imagine pushing down on the gas of your car uh, that's sort of what you want to try to mimic in order to target your gas drop so <sighs> there's an unnecessary spiel on calves that you did not ask for okay so to finish off the workout i always like to do a cool down this really really helps to flush out the tabloids that are in your muscles from the intensive exercise that you just did it gets the blood flowing through it so it flushes it all out and that helps to kick start the healing process and avoid that really horrible soreness like you know the really bad delayed onset muscle soreness that you can get so yes highly recommend doing even like two minutes of a cool down it, it will really make a big difference Okay, the voiceover doesn't end here. I will meet you back in my kitchen for the meal that I'm gonna show you guys. Hi, it's me again. So the meal that I'm gonna show you guys is one that I've been having pretty much mm, I would say like five times a week I eat it so often for lunch it's such an easy go-to meal I ate it a lot last year as well it's kind of like my go-to early spring sort of meal um that made no sense basically I'm getting out of eating the like hot lunches and now I want something cooler like a sort of pasta salad type thing this is what it looks like. Mm, it looks really good. I love this meal so much and it's so quick, easy, and healthy. In this video, I'm showing you the chicken salad version. So it's a chicken pasta salad, but most often than not, I actually make it with tuna. But it's really easy to follow along this recipe and you can just imagine swapping the chicken for the tuna. So all you're gonna need for this recipe is about a three quarters of a cup or like a handful or so of 
dried whole wheat pasta and you put that on the boil and while that's cooking you want to prepare your fresh fruits and vegetables to go in the salad so i like to put in about a half of an apple and cut it up chop it up into smaller chunks and i like to add in one green onion i love the combination of sweet and savory it's the best especially for a salad and as I mentioned in this recipe, I'm going to be using pre-cooked chicken and just chop it up into chunks. But it is, in my opinion, it's better with tuna. If you're not a big fan of tuna and the reason why you don't like it is the fishy taste, then I highly recommend buying the canned tuna that's in um, spring water rather than like whatever else you can get it in. It is the least fishy tasting. And also if you squeeze out all of the water, like really get rid of all of it then it really reduces how like salty and like fishy it tastes and you're just left with the good taste of the tuna so but if not the salad is still really good with chicken it just doesn't have like it's just like a bit more bland because chicken basically has no flavor <laughs> but um i just kind of added a little bit more salt to compensate I also added ground pepper and here you see me adding a low fat mayo and I am pretty generous with the mayo. It is the only fat source in this meal so I don't really mind adding a little bit extra and it just makes the salad, it's like basically the salad dressing so yeah. But if you want to add a little bit less mayo then you can always add in a dash of um, whatever milk that you have. I will sometimes add some almond milk and that will make it a little bit less dry. I then mix in the pasta and add in some greens and I like to put in like three handfuls of greens and that will really give the meal some volume and some nutrients and fiber and just mix it all together and if you guys want to you can add parmesan cheese and this is a game changer it makes it taste so good i highly recommend it it just mm, you don't need that much but it really really makes it have a better more nuttier flavor if you're vegan then you could try making this meal with like chickpea pasta and that be the protein source and then add the nutritional yeast on top so that is the finished meal. It's so delicious. Definitely give it a try if you're looking for something different or just like another healthy meal to add to your meal plan or your meal roster, whatever you want to call it. And that's going to finish off this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you didn't mind this format. It was a little bit easier for me to get back into YouTube after the holidays slash new year slash being sick for a month because I got that flu that has been going around. It was awful. Anyway, let me know what you think, what type of videos you want to see next, and I'll see you in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you enjoy my content. I really do appreciate it and it really helps me out. Um, so yeah, thank you very much and I'll see you soon.